The following production is brought to you by the Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. Here we go, Talkin' Buds Leaf Show. They were on the precipice of all hell breaking loose. Fans were calling for Sheldon Keith to be shown the door. They go down 2 nothing in the first period against the Calgary Flames, and you're thinking, oh my God, they're going to go on a five-game loser here. First time that's happened since Babcock got let go. In the Sheldon Keith era, that just doesn't happen, going on prolonged losing streaks like this. Then Austin Matthews goes... I really like my coach, and I don't want to see him lose his job. And he puts the team on his back, scores a hat trick. The Maple Leafs storm back and defeat the Calgary Flames 4-3, ending the losing streak. I don't think we're out of the woods yet because I saw after the game last night, Austin Matthews was given the celebratory player of the game championship belt. That belt should have gone to the Leafs video coaches picking up the hand pass that disallowed the tying goal but man this is what they've done this is what they've done in the entire Sheldon Keefe era just when you think they're about to go over the ledge they hang on and and maybe they can start to string together some wins here yeah they, they got a real real mulligan on that that goal that got disallowed in the third period which I mean I don't know what the whole process is on how the video guys analyze video so quickly, but that was very fast. So for them to pick that up and, and call that down, and even though they had to take a timeout and, and get more time to see if they were going to do it, Sheldon's just looking at um, what coach was it? I think Dean it was Chinouth. Dean Chinouth, that he was Dean Chinouth. yelling at him. He's got the he's got yeah. the, the the mic in his. Yeah, he's just, I got to know, I got to know, I got to know. And then, man, yeah, Martin, dude, the guy saved, saved Martin Jones on that one. Martin Jones played pretty well, but that was a stinker. Yeah, he just kind of lost that one, and he got a molly on that one. But. You could really, Sheldon's been wearing it these last few days. You can really, really see that the stress of the situation and the fan base calling for a coaching change is really, really, really wearing on the guy. Well, it's probably wearing on him that his team is just, Blowing leads. Yeah. And he's probably just doing everything he can to try to motivate them to not blow leads, but they're still blowing leads. They they pretty much blew one without Blake Coleman touching the puck. They blew another lead last night. Yep. So, I mean, they were pretty lucky, but I mean, they did end up just blowing the lead again. So him sitting back there trying to figure out what can I do? What combination can I put out there? Matthews and Marner were glued to the ice. Yeah at the end of the game because they were actually having a pretty good night. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting grayer. He's getting sweatier. He's getting redder. Uh, it looks like he's really going through it. But they, uh, they pull it out. They get the dub. I thought Mike Johnson put it perfectly on the broadcast last night. And I thought the Leafs actually ended up doing this where after they, the goal was called back, they started taking it back to the flames and they spent a lot of time in the offensive zone. And Mike Johnson said in the, in the game, you know, they're not built. The team is not built to defend for 20 minutes straight. So if they get up a couple of goals and they get back on their heels, they're not built to play hockey like that. It's a matter of time before the dam breaks and and they blow the lead. And I think that's what's been happening. It's, it's really, where are you at right now mentally? I just feel like the last... Four games have been an emotional roller coaster for a lot of fans. And I think right now there is a there is a split down the middle in the fan base of those who are in the camp that I'm in and I think you're in, which is they should strongly still consider changing the coach because that's the biggest card you have left to play. But then there's other people saying you could bring in Scotty Bowman and with this defensive core, it's not going to make a bit of difference. Yeah. I mean, I think anytime anything goes bad for this hockey team, it's just the negative reaction is just wait. All the people who are ready to be negative, just it just it's instantaneous because they showed a stat on the broadcast last night that they were 16 and 2 
with a multi-goal lead going into the third period for the whole season prior. I mean, I mean, for the before those three games, those three blown leads. So, I mean, they weren't doing it all year. They have been having a bit of a bad stretch, but I don't know. I, I, I just don't. I, I think I, this is exhausting talking about this. It's the season is not going anywhere. They're not good enough. So I'm just going to watch the rest of the regular season in peace, watch them get bounced in the first round. And that's my take. I think you and I have talked a lot about having realistic expectations. And I think, listen, you can kind of look at it like Justin Bourne's been saying this a lot on Kipper and Bourne. And I I agree with him. This is kind of a unique uh, thing for the Leafs in that, like for the last few seasons, by the time we've reached this point of the schedule, they've been well into a playoff spot, well into a playoff spot. That's not the case right now. They are two points up on the Red Wings and the Lightning. That uh, when the game, when the puck dropped against Calgary, they were in a wild card position. They were no longer in third in the division. So I think you can kind of look like it's kind of it's exciting to be in that race, and it makes every game matter more. But I think keeping your expectations in check. I've said this a lot. We, this is a team that fancies themselves that wants to be a cup contender. When the season started this year, they that was their expectation. And that they're not. They're not a cup contender. So as long as you like they can go on a run and whatever, anything can happen. But I I think this is a team that is probably going to come in either third place or in a wild card spot in their division. And they're gonna lose in the first round. Uh, yeah, depending on the matchup, I, or they're gonna need to play, they're gonna need to catch lightning in a bottle and play well. Where I'm at is I'm already looking towards the offseason and next year. Like I this year is means nothing to me. This year, they're not good enough. They have a lot of great players who put up a lot of great stats. They have arguably the greatest goal scorer to ever play the game, and it's fun watching him play when he's on his game like he was against Calgary. But this year is already, like, I've already kind of wiped it off my mind. This year is such a waste of time. I'm looking at next year on how how are we going to move off John Tavares a year earlier off his contract? Oh, my God. How are we going to, what are we going to do when we lose in the first round again and we look at Mitch Marner, William Nylander, and Austin Matthews and go, oh, let's do it again. Like that's where my how how are we moving off Mitch Marner? That that that's where my brain is. How are we completely rebuilding our decor? Like screw this year. Screw you know what? I kind of agree that maybe I mean maybe if they did fire Keith and they brought in a new guy, whoever that is, everyone loves Rube and Quenville or whoever, maybe elevating Guy Boucher. I don't really care. I don't think I actually don't think it's gonna make a difference. I think maybe they get a little bump at first. But they're not they're not beating the Florida Panthers in a seven game series in the playoffs. It is it is not happening. So I'm already looking towards next season. I'm already looking at how are you going to take your decor and completely rebuild it, either through free agency trades, whatever. How are you going to move off the biggest albatross contract in the league? How are you going to look at your core and decide that it's going to be good enough again? Like to me, like I, that's what I'm already looking at. Well, I'm steadfast, and like you mentioned, Marner, I'm steadfast, and they're they're not moving off. The only way that I think every like that would be on the table is if they miss the playoffs this year. If they make the playoffs this year. Mitch Marner's getting his 12 million next year, and that's that. This is an awful take. This is just like an old guy, angry Leaf guy take. Sometimes I kind of wish they won't make the playoffs. Oh, because you think like, that's like the only way they'll yeah, have like real deep change. Down, deep, I know that's such a dumb thing to say because, I mean, when they go to the playoffs, it's always exciting and then we're always disappointed and we always come on here and throw an absolute spaz when they get eliminated and our subscribers go up, our views go up, yeah. and it's a lot of fun. But the only way that anything m- major is going to change with this team is if they don't make the playoffs because we talk about how Brendan Shanahan and maybe MLSE are just cool with them finishing in third every year, selling a bunch of jerseys, going to the first round, losing, but at least they're competitive. At least they're in the conversation, whatever. If that gets taken away from them, then That's people real are really going to start looking around. But, being, you know, okay, so like, I, I just like, I hate how it's January 19th and I'm already um, looking towards how am I moving off John Tavares' contract? Well, that, that's next the ba- because that's... you can't you can't win with him on the ice making that much money with Timothy Lilligren on your second pairing with Jake McCabe. It's not good enough. No, no, it's not. And good enough. Their goaltending is sketchy too. Like I'm jo- not I'm not fully confident in their goaltending no, either. No, Martin Jones. Martin Jones has been has, has been pretty good. They're but... not. They're not beating 
the Panthers. They're not beating the Bruins. They're, they would never beat, like, look at some of the Western teams. They, 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 would, they would never beat the Golden Knights in a, in a cup final that they ever got there. You know, they just don't really compare very well. I mean, maybe they could, maybe if they finish in the wild card and they somehow play the Rangers in the first round. Or like a Philadelphia Flyers. Which or I haven't like seen that. enough F- Philadelphia Flyer hockey to really have a good take on where they're at, but they're. They're right there. Yeah, but they're they're having a great year. Yeah. I mean, Carolina. We see the Leafs play Carolina. Carolina works their ass off. Yep. And out for, works them out four checks them. I just you look at all the matchups across the board. There's not a like. I just don't think they're beating any team that has a, a, a team that plays hard, has a decor who can move the puck. They're just they're just not good enough. Yeah. It's d- just defensively, as simple as that. Defensively, especially. But l- let's talk. You know me. I, I think I think talking about potentially moving. Barring them missing the playoffs, I think talk, talking about potentially moving off Marner is a complete and utter waste of time. I don't think it's happening. But his play as of late, I'm talking about John Tavares, it's it's a real, real problem, man. He is, this is the worst stretch of hockey he has had since he signed here. It looks like he's, it looks like his, he looks tired. He looks fatigued. He looks like he's lost his confidence. He looks like he doesn't know what he should be doing out there. He's impacting his line mates. Like lot, there's been a lot of criticism lobbied at Nylander for like, you know, he's gone cold after he signed his extension and he has, I'm not trying to say he hasn't, but the guy's got an absolute anchor that he's playing with. Like you, you it's two, t- two, two anchors. Yeah, Tyler Bertuzzi as well. Like Actually, it's, I would say John Tavares is a flat tire and I'd say Tyler Bertuzzi is the Titanic. Like if I had to play on a line with that guy, I would probably consider not showing up to the rink. It's yeah. I just think the, the Tavares thing is really, it's really tough because he's having playing like a third line, center. having Nylander signed to that extension. Like it's been well documented how much cap space that's going to eat up next year. And if you, you're going to be in the exact same spot you are this year, next year, maybe even potentially a worse spot if you don't find a way to move off, like figure out what you're going to do with John Tavares. Like, yeah, I don't you, know if you're going into next year, and you're, you're fucked. Like, I don't know what you're going to do. The guy's got a full, no move clause. Yeah. Like what, like barring him agreeing to get traded which and is even, not gonna, which is not going to happen. And even if he did, even if he did, you are retaining some of that 11 million. So you're going to have some dead cap. Well, at least it's at least. It, yeah. You'd have some dead cap, but at least he'd be out yeah. the door and he'd be kind of ready to look forward. Barring but. him retiring, which is also not going to happen. I don't know what you do with the guy because I just think he's, he's reached a point. I'm not, I don't think for the rest of the season, he's going to be this bad. I think at some point he'll, he'll kind of not good enough come back into form, but like the guys, the guys in his mid thirties, he's never been fleet of foot. It's caught up with him. Now it's only going to get harder and harder as time goes on. Yes. You only have one more year left of this, but I don't, I don't, like, I, I, don't I, I look at I look at Nazem Kadri, who by all accounts has since he's gone to Calgary has not been very great. Hasn't been putting up great numbers. But I mean he's making seven million a season and you're looking at Tavares and it's like what well, what's the difference between these two guys? Like this guy just can't be eating this much cap space up when they don't have a defenseman who could sk- Move a puck out of their own it's zone. It's really the 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 defense. Like core. the rest of their team is suffering because of because of him. The, like it's just he's yeah. he's a black hole in their lineup. Yeah, the, the the defense core, like they play, they're not a team that's sort of like an off the glass and out team. That's not how they want to play. They they're a puck possession team, and so a, a lot. Puck possession. When they get the puck possession. When they get the when they get the puck in the defensive zone. When a defenseman gets a puck below the goal line, okay, the way they want to play is they want to pass it and carry the puck out across their blue line into the opposing team's blue line. The only guy on the back end who can consistently make a good first pass out of the zone is Morgan Riley. Everyone else just doesn't have the the skating, doesn't have the hands, what have you. It's just a complete and utter lack of talent. They've got a bunch of five, six guys. Like, Simone Benoit, perfect example. Simone Benoit has been pretty good this year. He's a guy who's who's who definitely has... I think oh, he's their second best defenseman. But he's but he's not... But Ryan, he's... he's I, a, I know, I know. But that's, that's what I'm saying. It's well, yeah, I, I'm, it's, I'm watching the game being like, I actually think Simone Benoit is their second best defenseman. Yeah, but... It, and, he's, and he shouldn't be there. He's a borderline NHLer. Yes, 
I know. It's it's real, and you're right. So you look at Tavares now carrying that $11 million price tag, playing the way he's playing. It's a black hole of money that it's, you would use to it's rebuild killing your... It's, yeah. it's been killing them for years, I, and, and, and we always just kind of make excuses because... He's a good guy, and he's a point per game guy, and he's a Hall of Fame, borderline Hall there. of Fame guy. But it's 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 killing them. Yeah, it is having him in their lineup. It's yeah. it's it's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Killing them. It's and then looking back on it, I know we talked about it last week. It was we were all so excited when he signed, but looking back on it, in, in twenty years from now, looking at this era of the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're going to point to that contract and be like, "That was the worst decision they ever oh, made." Oh, I bet you if you could, if you could give someone some truth serum and you could get in the time machine and go back, I wonder if they would have made give him given him that money. Yeah, absolutely him. not. Yeah, but at the time, like I said, I don't like playing the 2020 hindsight. No, game. neither do I. But it's at, at this point in 2024, with another year coming up with a full no move, like it's just I have to wait. Not. Yeah, to the end of this year, but the end of next year to see this guy's money off the cap. It's it's really, it. I'm really not stoked thinking about that. No, no. All. And and you, like I said earlier, you're you're seeing him struggling now, and it's only going to get harder and harder for him as he goes forward. And my take on him, I said it last week, and I tweeted it again last night watching the game. I, and if you disagree with this, you're just sentimental about the guy, which I get. I I don't feel that way, but I get it. You're either taking a major, major, major haircut on a one-year extension, or we're walking away. Like, he's at a point right now, like, unless he drastically turns this around, if he comes to the table and says, okay, I want five, six million, no thanks. No, you're looking at... Especially on, like, a two, three-year extension. No, you're looking at a max two-year extension, probably be asking for around $5 million. Because if you're paying... I mean, you're basically playing a house league hockey player five and a half million dollars for a one year deal right now. <laughs> you, you just so, you just cannot stand Tyler. D- dude, the guy is the worst hockey player. Like he he is. What do you say to the people like so? Chris Versteeg was on the Fan Five Ninety this week, and I and I, I really liked listening to him because he he it was like it was kind of euphoric listening to him because everything he was ranting about with Shel- Sheldon Keefe is exactly what I've been saying for forever. What do you say? Sheldon Keefe clearly has an issue. He said so as much the other day. He said after the Edmonton game, he goes, I still don't know who I can trust and who to put out there at the right time. So I've actually I loved that quote. You said last night uh, against Calgary, Matthews and Marner are glued to the ice. Yeah. He he doesn't know, like I think he looks at a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi and he has no idea how to utilize him, who to utilize him with, what role to put him in. You know, he came in here and we were, we thought like play, there's a video on our TikTok that we posted in the summer talking about him being an upgrade on Mike Bunning and being that type of. That is an app. Mike Bunning is Wayne Gretzky compared <laughs> to Tyler Bertuzzi. But, okay. So you're behind the bench, right? And I want you, I know I want you to put your personal feelings about Tyler Bertuzzi aside here. They're not personal. It's just what I've seen. So you're you're behind the bench, okay? You've got Tyler Bertuzzi in your lineup. What role are you putting in, putting him in to try and ha- so he can have success? I'm putting him on the fourth line and just waiting for this year to run out so I never have to see him in a Toronto Maple Leaf uniform oh. ever again. Okay, so there's no point. There's no th- th- way you're going to get I just me don't a understand. I just don't understand what like what has he shown anybody this season? I, I like I like his whole swag. I loved the idea of him coming in here, maybe because it's again another guy with a good last name and has a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a a rat, so to speak. And that that's a very exciting prospect for this team, having anybody come in here and be sort of kind of a shit disturber. But I just don't like you're watching him, and it's just like I, I I'm trying like I don't have anything personal against him. I was really rooting for him. We were so excited that he was coming here. And clearly, we've never watched a Tyler Bertuzzi game before. We were just being all excited about him coming here. And it, clearly, we've never watched a Red Wing game ever. Because I, I just don't understand what he does. He doesn't, he, he, he can't skate. He doesn't hit. He's not a shit disturber. He's not getting points. He's been on the top two lines all year. He has no points. People, Mike, Mike Bunning got 20, he had a 23 goal season, 23 goal season, back to back, playing on the top line. Tyler Bertuzzi's played on the top two lines all year. He's six goals. What, like, 
He's he he can't. Have you ever seen Tyler Bertuzzi get the puck at, in his own end and skate it through the neutral zone? I, I've never seen it because he can't skate. He can't hit. Like I just don't understand what this guy does. People who go on about what they like about Tyler Bertuzzi always talk about how he wins battles along the oh. boards and keeps offensive plays alive. You know, and you like, know who that's... could do Pierre Engvall could do that. Like you know, it's just. Let's not get carried away. I know, I know, but like, it's like, I actually think that Alex Kerfoot is more valuable than Tyler Bertuzzi. I, I'm not joking. And I, I, I was so excited to never see Alex Kerfoot play a game ever again. Like I don't get, like, I don't like Alex Kerfoot as a hockey player, but he, he's more valuable than, than Bertuzzi. Like at least he played on the PK and was a. I can move like I just don't understand well, Sheldon, what Tyler Bertuzzi Sheldon does. Keefe, Sheldon Keefe clearly is not a Tyler Bertuzzi. And guy. I don't blame him because it's it's nothing personal. It's just you put him out there and you're kind of just like I'm just watching the game. And I'm scratching my head, being like I don't know what this guy is. What what type of player is he? I thought he was a a shit disturber. He's not disturbing any shit. He, can, he can't even catch up to the game. So I'm just hoping that there's another gear inside of this guy come April. He was, he was, he was a, he, he played very well. Now, granted, they ended up choking that series away to the Florida Panthers, but like, let's, let's he hope. played very well for the Bruins last year. From day one of this season, he's, he's just looked out of shape. Well, I, I also wonder if, if he as a type of player, so he clearly played well in Boston. And I wonder if maybe the way the Bruins like anybody play. could play. I feel like I yeah, could wear a Bruins I, I uniform wonder if, and I, I hop just, on the third line. I wonder if he's not a great fit for how this Leaf team is built and how Sheldon Keefe deploys them. Like, that's that's my thing. Like, I, I just don't... You need to be able to skate to play with the elite guys on this team, and you need to be able to process the game very that, quickly. That, that's one thing that this team has, has lost a little bit over, this, over the years, is they, they can't skate. They don't have a lot of great well, I'm, skaters. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about like if you want to play, like the, we had him penciled in to play with Matthews and Marner because and he couldn't yeah, hang up there because he can't skate. If you're looking at Mike Bunning, was an absolute nobody. The guy in 20, 21, 22, it's sixty three points. Like that's a hell of a year. Yeah, I would have resigned. How, how much did he sign for again? Uh, like what, what? Four and a half million? Yeah, something like that. Like th- um, like this the like. We could we couldn't we couldn't four and a half million. I would have re-signed this guy in two seconds. Yeah. Like he's like especially because like Bertuzzi's making a, a like a million yeah, more than that. Back to back twenty three goal seasons. Like it's and, and and I'm watching Tyler Bertuzzi and I'm going, I don't really understand what this guy does. I I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just I'll, my outlook on this team is 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 awful right now because I'm just looking at what 2024, 2025 is gonna be like. Because this year's a complete waste of time. All they could do right now is fire a coach, maybe bring in a new guy to create a little bit of, and then do what like the, the Canucks did last year when they got rid of Boudreaux, they bought in talk it and well, they, kind of, they so, kind of turned it around a so little how bit do you, th- again, but like you can look at, I'm a firm believer that this, this roster is not as like to, to be where they are in regulation wins amongst some of the teams, amongst some of the league's worst in regulation w- wins. I'm a firm believer that this roster is not that bad of a roster when you look at a lot of the talent they have up front. When I look at it, I see a defense core that is nowhere near good enough. Like, talent-wise, nowhere near good enough defense core. And then you look at the the forwards, and you have Sheldon Keefe, who has no idea what to do with anyone not named Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. No clue. Like you were and I were texting again about Max Domi and you were kind of, you're like, we coming like, you're coming around on with the folks who like, don't love Max Domi. And I'm, I'm sorry. I won't go there. I will not go there. I'm going to be a Max supporter because Max Domi has shown that when he's paired with the right guys, he can play really well. He needs to be paired with guys. He Max Domi is a guy that needs to be elevated. He needs a, he needs to play with a Marner to get the best out of him. And when you're putting him on a third line with guys that Max Domi can't carry guys, Right, he needs to be. He needs someone that can help carry him. Yeah. And one thing that I've always claimed, and the, like you, you had the, th- you have him as your third line centerman. Okay. When you make Max Domi your third line centerman, you are signaling to the world we want offense out of our third line because Max Domi is not a checking centerman. He's not. He's an offensive hockey player. He's he. The biggest knock on him is defensively, he's a bit of a dumpster fire. But you put him out there, 
You don't give him anyone to play with. Him and Robertson were kind of going along there for a while. Sheldon has decided he doesn't like Nick Robertson anymore, so Nick Robertson never gets to play. So you've got him out there, and you're only playing him eight minutes a night. What the fuck is the guy supposed to do with that? He has no idea how to deploy his bottom six. And I think when you look at a talk in Vancouver, he came in with essentially the same roster that that Brucey had and just kind of looked at it a different way and is getting more out of it than what Boudreaux could have. Yeah, that's fair. And that's what I think, that's why I'm so, and like, th- that's great they got the win against Calgary. Doesn't change the fact that Sheldon Keefe has still got to go because this is the team. I do believe that leading up to the deadline, Tree Living is going to make some kind of move. Is it going to be a move that is going to be a significance, that is a move of significance that is going to alter this uh this roster drastically like what Kyle Dubas did last year? No, it's going to be another depth defensive piece, maybe another forward defensive piece, something like that. So for all intents and purposes, this is the team, okay? So if you want to get more out of it and you don't want to be fighting for a playoff spot and you want to be have a chance at winning a round, then I think you bring in a new coach to try and squeeze more juice out of this than what Keefe is currently getting. If they don't do anything, if, if, if true living doesn't end up making a move at the deadline and they don't end up firing Sheldon Keefe, that tells you all you need to know right there, because they're basically saying, we're just going to ride this out. And if we make the playoffs, great. If we don't great. And it kind of is what it is, but it's really frustrating. And, And I will say that the bit of slack, I will cut Tyler Bertuzzi is, I'll cut him this bit of slack. Sheldon has no idea what to do with him. And and how could he? Ryan, he doesn't know what to do with anyone not named Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. He doesn't know what to do with anyone. Uh, I, I think I think you're... Uh, you can, and, and I'm not even going to give know. him credit. I'm not even going to give him credit for knowing what to do with Matthews, Marner, and Nylander. Because you could put me behind the bench and I'd throw Austin Matthews out there. When you have the best goal scorer on the planet, you want him out there as much as you, as possible. But to win a Stanley Cup, you need four lines that are all contributing. I'll, I'll give Sheldon you... Keefe has no fucking idea how to deploy his roster. Like, you said you love that quote the other day, okay? And to a degree, he's not wrong. Like, we all sit here saying, who's he going to put out here? But that's what you're paid to do, bro. That's your fucking job. Yeah, but and he doesn't he, have the raw. He doesn't have the players. It, it, he's got to figure. Why? Why did the Vancouver Canucks look like one of the worst teams in hockey last year? And then Rick Tockett comes in and they are one of the top teams in the Western Conference and well, in the entire league. Their top guys started playing better. And their goalie started making saves so, again. Fair. They have, the be- they have one of the best goaltenders on planet Earth. Fair. I'll give you the goaltending. So does the Winnipeg Jets. I'll give you the goaltending. But he was able to get more out of their top guys yeah, and their depth yeah. guys than than what get, than what Brucey was able to get. I, I I don't disagree with any of it. I I honestly don't think that I I how has he not put Tyler Bertuzzi in a good position to succeed this year? The guy's been on the first and second line all it's, year. It's it's not He's on the ice more than any like more than any of these other guys. It's not that he hasn't put him in a good. It, it's like just Max he doesn't Do- know. I'll give you Max Domi. I'll give you that because that third line is a fucking disaster. Like yes. I don't know if Max Domi can play center. From what I've seen, it looks like he can't. And I agree with what you said. I think if you put him on the wing with with a better player. He's probably better off. So really, you're looking at they need a third line center. Yes, based off what I'm watching right yes. now. So I'll yes. give you that. Like maybe someone else comes in. They look at the bottom six. They kind of move it around a little bit. They try to fire some guys up. Totally, like, get like, it, like Tyler but, Bertuzzi. Here, here's. But, but if I, I, honestly, I don't. If I'm Sheldon Keefe, I'm behind the bench looking at Tyler Bertuzzi, being like, I, I don't know what to do. But he's, I, I don't know what to do with this guy. Okay, he, he's been on. He's been on the top two lines, which are the two lines the Leafs rely the most to generate offense. He's proven just on the rant you went on comparing his numbers to Mike Bunning's numbers. He's he's proven that. He struggles to generate offense, especially with the guys in the Leafs' top struggles six. Struggles to keep the puck so on his maybe, stick for more than a second. So maybe you look at him and you go, okay, maybe we'll, we'll utilize you in a third-line checking role, okay? But you've got Max Domi as the third-line center. So what you're going to... It doesn't work. Like there's th- that third line is no identity. They have don't they don't they need a third line center. They like, need a third line center. Right they need now. a third line center who is better than David Kampf. Yeah, that's need, what they need. They need to go back in time and convince Ryan O'Reilly to play on the third line. Yes, and they need like I, I would elevate Max to the and put him on the wing with with Nylander and 
Tavares, but then that opens a third line center hole. So then you got to move Camp up and, and like put Pontus back at center. But then who plays wing with Matthews and Marner? I don't. I think you can move, put anybody in there. I, I don't know. move Nyes back up and move put Nyes back there. there. Nyes is another guy too. Who I mean, or play do a game. He's play. kind of he for a guy who's been playing really good minutes all year. He doesn't have a lot of points to show for it either. Well, but he's, he's a, a he's a rookie. He's so a rookie. so yeah, there's a lot. I do love his. But at least that guy goes in and four checks yeah. and hits somebody. It, it strips pucks. Like at least he does that. He's a he's a he is a rookie. Yeah. So I'll I'll cut him I'll cut him that slack. But yeah, I just I, I don't know. It's it just seems like it, it's Sheldon's gonna Sheldon, and I think a lot of guys suffer. I, I think Sheldon needs to get more out of his top players. Like like I know I, I, I personally if I was Matt, Sheldon Matthews, Keith, a, Matthews I, I'd side. be looking at my team also being like I don't know what to do with that third line. Like I, I have no center. Like we're gonna put David Camp there. Like. If Camp's a nice little player, right? but like, come on. But I, I'm looking at my top players going, because those guys are on the ice for the blowing leads too. It, it, like I know they, they provide offense and they, they'd be absolutely nowhere without them. But I mean, when it comes down to big moments, you need you need to get the best out of your best players to to win big hockey games. Well, so Matt, that, that's you, another thing to look at. Matt, I think Matthews and Marner have been pretty good. Like I thought I thought the 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 Edmonton game, they were that line was the best line for them all night long and then Matthews put the team on his back and got them a win in Calgary. So yeah. so I he, mean I am probably talking about the Tavares the whole, and Neil. No, I'm probably talking about like as a whole like that, that, that's playoffs included for yeah, those guys. Yeah, yeah, you're like, talking like big picture, big picture, uh, not, not game to game, because I mean, how can you really criticize a guy who almost has 40, he almost has more goals right now than he did last year. Yeah. So, I mean, he's having a great year, but I, I, I want Sheldon Keefe gone, but at the end of the day, I totally get his frustration though. I, I get it because I, maybe he's just like, I don't know what to do with this. I mean, I'm not like, maybe he's just not the guy for this. It's just he, he he had a couple good teams that didn't go anywhere, well, and now he just kind of has this roster that's kind of just piecemealed together. Well, you're right. The third, you don't have any centermen. The third line center. You don't have any thing. defense. Yeah, the third line center thing is is well. Well, that's why I kind of liked. That's why the the Nick Robertson thing kind of frustrates me because at least Robertson's a guy who could sort of skate with Domi, and if you're gonna, first of all. I don't know what the plan is with Nick Robertson. If the plan is to eventually move off him, then you should be playing him to sort of up his value so someone will want to make a deal with him. He's clearly a guy that needs a fresh start somewhere else, especially as long as this coach is behind the bench. Like, Sheldon Keefe has no interest yeah, he in has playing it, the guy. He has it out for Robertson. Yeah. He has anybody who's played on any sort of sports team at any point in your life knows that a coach just has it out for a guy and that's, he just does not like Nick Robertson. Like no I didn't think, what. I didn't think the Domi, the Domi Robertson yarn line was, was that bad because at least you were saying, okay, we've got two guys who have some offensive upside and Domi and Robertson. And then you've got yarn who can chip in for a goal here and there, but it's also defensively responsible hockey player. That's what made sense to me. And then you got the fourth line, which is like, David Camp, who was supposed to be a face-off specialist who has been anything but this year, and he's also been hasn't been that good on the penalty kill. And Gregor and McMahon, who can skate and four check, and you have like a four checking fourth line. I think that's line. a I think that's a decent fourth line. Yeah, the fourth line is the fine. Line's but yeah. a decent. I think it's one of the best fourth lines they've had in a, in a while. Yeah, but in an ideal world, you would get a centerman that's like a good shutdown centerman for that third line, and you would put I would put Bertuzzi there in in a in a role that is like a checking sort of role and not really an offensive upside kind of role, move Domi up and give him a look with the top six and see what he can do up there and have Nyes up in the top yeah, six. Yeah, the third well. line, just no, they just don't have an identity. It's a black hole. It's a black hole. It's been a black hole all year. I, I think if you brought in a new coach, he could he could get more out of, more out of that forward group, excuse me. But nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody is doing anything with those, with that decor, I no, they it can't be done. They can't. It just cannot be done. They're not good enough. Yeah, super. No matter, um, those guys could literally play the best games of their lives and still lose because they're they're just not good enough. Yeah, and they're small. Like the it's, they, just, they just can't move the puck. No, they, they can't puck move movers. Yeah, they're not. Nobody yeah, can skate. Riley's the only guy who can who can execute the way they Jake want. Jake McCabe, like he, sometimes he can lay a guy out, make a play, but I mean when that guy's in tight space and he has to make a pass. Uh, yeah. 
The, 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 the wheels aren't turning fast enough. You know what would be really great is if Timothy Lilligren decided Never he's going to play like a... Like, like I, I, I always think that when I look at them. It's like, could you imagine if Timothy Lilligren played like a top four D-man on a consistent basis? That would totally change the complexion of their defense. But he just doesn't do it. I'm kind of looking at their penalty kill, too. And I'm like, you know who they're kind of missing out there? Oh, no, don't say it. Number three. Uh, <laughs> No, I do not miss that guy. Yeah, don't Dude, say it. Keep my, I don't miss anyone who's left this team. Mm. I don't miss anybody. But sometimes when new guys come in and you watch them, you kind of think back being like, maybe like, Kerfoot wasn't that bad sometimes. You know, like yeah. there's some of these, well, like played, you think he, the grass is always greener on the other side. He executed in certain roles. That guy was a black hole offensively, but he he executed. In, so so is Tyler Bertuzzi. Yeah. He's a black hole offensively. He got just nothing. Well, that's what I mean. That's And that's why I say like they keep putting him in the top six. He doesn't contribute in a top six role because they, they want offense out of their first two lines and he just doesn't provide it. So, but again, you move him down to the third line and you move Max up. Who the fuck is playing center on the third line? Yeah, they need to just go steal Phil Dano uh, yeah. out, of, out of LA. That's and honestly just bring him in here. Honestly, if so, that's a really interesting question. As you head into the deadline, like uh, the both of that would be on the table because realistically, in terms of a defenseman, who are you getting? That's that's better. If you want to, everyone knows the Leaf defense is terrible. So if you want to go get a quote unquote difference maker and the name du jour, and I don't know how much more of a difference maker you would be. The name du jour is Chris Tanev. And now and now all of a sudden there's rumblings that Jake Chikrin's available again. Yeah, but and, guess what? Everyone knows the Leaf defense is shit. So yeah. you're gonna have to pay through the nose in you're order have to, to get, get rid him. of multiple first rounders and probably Matthew Nyes to get anyone who of would actually make a difference. Yes, not, and, which they're not gonna do. I do not think at this point in time moving off any like I don't think Chris Tanev is a difference maker. No, I don't. And you look at so you look at their cap situation next year. This team is going to be in desperate need of young, cheap guys who can who can contribute. So moving off a Nyes, moving off a Minton, moving off a Cowan, moving off a f- another first round draft choice is not smart. It's not for a fix. That is not even if you brought in a Jake Chikrin or a Chris Tanev, you're still not winning a Stanley Cup this year. Not with Martin Jones and Ilya Samsonov. It's not happening. So maybe if you get if you move as you move closer to the deadline, maybe that's who you target. Someone who you can bring in and play in a third line center role. Which is I feel like well, that's something they've been looking for every Forever. year yeah, yeah. at the deadline. It's they not, finally got one last year and it still wasn't good enough. Yeah. But I mean that's like that line is clearly not providing offense. Callie Arncrow can can chip in sometimes, but for the most part, he's not an offensive player. And then you can find another guy to put on that wing to to make it a more of a shutdown line because I just don't see that line ever transforming into an offensive line. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So I, I mean, there's no defense on the market that they can get that's gonna that's it's gonna, gonna make a huge anything. difference. Chris Tanev yeah. is not worth trading a first round. Like I, I I watched him last night. Like there's nothing impressive coming out of that guy's. Like there's yeah, not, he's an upgrade, yes, but like he's like, not not you're not gonna you're not gonna I'm pay. I'm talking about like Brad Tree Living needs to do what he did with Matthew Matthew Kachuk, even though he ended up losing that trade big time. Yeah. That's the type of trade that you're gonna have to make you get a defenseman in here. Like you're going to have to trade somebody of name value off your hockey team to go get another name that has value that you can bring in on your decor. Who do you trade? I I would tra- I mean oh, that's a that's a different conversation. There's only the only guys who are worth anything on this team is somehow you move off a core piece, which the thought thought of that happening is almost impossible. So it's hard to put that out. And then the other one it's like I think Matthew Nyes is the only guy worth anything on this hockey team. That isn't a core like guy. Minton, Minton and Cowan, like they, they, they're, they're, they're nothing. They're, they're unproven. unproven. They're unproven. Well, that isn't a core guy because a lot of people who are watching this right now would say move off Marner. Which yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I know. That's do. that's what I was alluding to. It's like yeah. you move off Mitch Marner. Marner's also got a, a full no move, so he's got to agree to go. So I mean, yeah. it's just the no move clause has got to fucking stop. Holy shit. Yeah, I gotta do. I gotta do more research of like who's available. Before this. we hold on. Before we before we let go here, like we, we brought Marner up again. What did you think of the of the comments I, after the stupidest thing. after the the <sighs> Rob that was that was ridiculous. I get what he's trying to do. 
but it's 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 extremely tone deaf. It's the most tone deaf thing yeah, I've ever a, of all time. And it, like, he, he, he he sounded clearly, like a complete n- nimbus. He like, cl- he clearly doesn't understand how he comes off to the fan base when he makes those types of comments. It comes off very like we're being attacked. It's us against the world, that sort of thing. And like I understand. I understand maybe for for cer- some people the the us against the world thing works. So I get I get maybe going there but it's just one of the things people have found frustrating about this team is is they just like kind of the apathy they take sometimes and 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 I don't think they are apathetic. I think these guys hate losing. You don't get you don't get to become a a um professional athlete if if you're not a competitive person, but it just yeah, it doesn't come off it doesn't come off very good. And I do think Mitch I sit here repeatedly and I and I say I don't think they're moving off him and I don't like talking about it because I think it's a waste of fucking time. But it, my honest opinion is I think it would be good for him to leave this market. I think this market and I think what he went through with his last contract negotiation and he's getting set to go through it again next year. Go go play in contract. Columbus. Yeah, I do think he's a guy who would thrive. Or like a Carolina go comes play to Carolina. mind. Carolina. Yeah. yeah, he's a guy. Go to Columbus. He's a guy that I think would thrive in that environment. I think you know, growing up in this market and being a fan of the team and going through that and just kind of I don't know. It was it was really. People throw around the word unlikable a lot when it comes to this core, and that's what they're talking about is those types of post game comments. It, it's just, it was just like, it sounded like he was just talking about himself. Like, it sounded like he was just being like, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm playing great. He said, we're playing great, but it's. Yeah, it's like we're playing great hockey. Dude, it's no, like, you're it's not. like, no, you're not, man. You've just come out and, and just do the old, we need to be better. Move like save yourself the hassle. That's yeah, that's save that's to me. Save yourself the hassle. That, but that that why, to why me, are you p- opening yourself up for criticism by say, you know that is a stupid thing to say. I no no he doesn't Ryan. Yeah that, that that's no what, he doesn't. That's I, 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 no he doesn't. Like because he would he wouldn't say it like that. And I think that's the thing that I personally find alarming about it is you just said you know that's a stupid thing to say. No he doesn't. Like he thinks that that's the right thing to say in the moment. He does not want to feel criticized. And it's like. That's not how being a pro athlete works. I hate to cut you off here because I just, I don't want to spend too much time on that. It was a stupid comment, whatever. Chris Tanev's going to be UFA at the end of the year. (laughs) Yeah. Why would you trade picks for him? I know. If you could just go get him in the offseason. Yes. There's actually some decent names on this list of D men coming up. Tyson Berry? No. (laughs) Noah Hannafin, he's coming up. Chris Tanev coming up. Brett Pesci coming up. Matthew Dumba. Zadorov's coming up. You you would have traded away a first round pick for him. Brandon Montour. I'd hand that guy John Tavares money right now and yeah. be like, let's go, buddy. Yeah. Sorry. I just uh, no, it's fair. It's fair. Yeah, the but, season um, is just it sucks. It's yeah, well, it sucks because of the cap situation they're in. And the fact and the and that this fucking hard cap and the I'm, stupid I'm league. Pissed. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just pissed at myself at the start of the year. I was like, this is this team could this team could win the division. Like, I have n- I had no idea what it was talking uh, about. No, no, I think I no, with who? In with fairness, Elias Samsonov. Uh, like, like, in fairness, everyone went into this season. Jake McCabe. Everyone like, went on. into this season looking at the decor, going, "That's not. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's not it." Like everyone yeah. went into the season looking at it like that. And I, you got to look at it too. Like you and I are are, are really. We haven't criticized uh, Brad True Living a whole lot because I just don't think he's been here that long enough. And I think Brendan Shanahan is... I'm sick and tired of Brendan Shanahan getting off scot-free from criticism. But, dude, you look at Brendan Shanahan... I mean, the off-season signings from True Living. Like, Klingberg, bust. Reeves, bust. Bertuzzi, no idea how to utilize him. And it's, like, being ineffective. Max Domi, coach doesn't like playing him in a top-six role. Um, his best signing was Martin Jones. Yeah. It's like all these signings yeah. that we were all so stoked on in the off season. Like they, none of them have really like, aside from Jones, none of them have really like panned out. No. Yeah. Like Ryan Reeves, they, they gave, they sauced the guy some money under the table to hurt himself. <laughs> <laughs> 
They took him into a back room and handed him an envelope full of cash and said, now next game, you're going to go out there and you're just run, gonna your run your into the boards. boards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and blow your knee up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh right. man. we gotta get out of here once we start getting into conspiracy theories it's officially off the rails yeah well i mean you look at you look at the schedule and they've got a back-to-back this weekend against the juggernaut vancouver canucks and then the, the seattle kraken and then they've got the home and home against the jets and then they're off for the all-star break so they've got some time here like if i don't know man i think like Keith bought himself some time with the Calgary win, but if they if they go O for this weekend against the 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 Canucks and the Kraken, the come Monday morning the noise is going to be just as loud as it was two days ago. Yeah, especially if they're blowing leads. Yes, which yeah. is which makes it worse than them just losing in overtime or any other way like they just them just blow like that's such a sensitive topic so just don't blow leads don't blow leads thank you very much everybody for checking us out if you like what you see hit that like and subscribe button below spread the word tell your friends we really appreciate it we will be back on monday after the the weekend double header also a great weekend of nfl football really looking forward to that as well folks We come on here and we rant and rave, but I think, you know, it's just, it's in the name of having realistic expectations for what this team is and what they can accomplish this year. And I think at the end of the day, the thing that I always come back to is this is a team every year when the, when training camp opens, the term cup window gets thrown around because of their core guys. So anything short of being a perennial Stanley Cup team is is not where they want to be. And I think we're more than halfway through the season now. I think if you realistically look at this team and what they are, I think there's things they can do to get more out of this season. I think once you get into the playoffs, it's a roll of the dice and anything can happen. But as currently constituted, what we're trying to do is have realistic level-headed expectations for what the rest of this season is and is going to be with this team as currently constituted. These episodes are just getting longer, too. Yeah, they are getting longer. This is like the longest one we've done in three years. That's right. 50 minutes here. All right, and with that, let's call it. All right. See you guys next time.